Hello everybody, welcome to the first Blood Bowl 3 Chalice, the first round. We've got Sexador de Orcos with Dwarves versus Sirizia with Orcs. Um, Sexador de Orcos is Harumazil from Twitch. I shall link his, uh, his Twitch in the description. He streamed this match. And of course there is no... Uh, there is no uh, Cabal Vision in Blood Bowl 3, so we just have to watch his stream. And hello, Flicky Flack. Alright, let's... Let's go. <laughs> it's a strange thing, isn't it, this, but... Yeah, unfortunately, it's a little bit low quality. But it is what it is. Oh, it's a quiet stream. Maybe I could put the sound on. Maybe it's really quiet, but we won't put the sound on. So, it's funny that Sexador de Orcos is the dwarves, and he's, he's against the orcs. Um, so, as you can see, we've got lots of guard here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guard for the orcs, which is pretty good. And it's kind of a min-maxed dwarf team, uh, to the extent that they've got Morgan Thorg, which is pretty good. And they've got a Death Roller, and they've also got some guard, not a ton of Mighty Blow. Unfortunately, you can't tell where the stats are. You know, they, they actually might not be a might not be a min-maxed dwarf team. Like they could all have Strength Fall, <laughs> and you just couldn't see it. <laughs> But uh, I believe it's pretty much a min-maxed dwarf team. He's got a niggle, but that doesn't affect the match right at all. So, I mean, un unless they've implemented it incorrectly, which they might have done. <laughs> is that pile driver? Is it? Oh wow, a pile driver death roller. Flip me. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say that was randoms. <laughs> or maybe he just thought it would be funny. I'm not sure who Sirizia is. Uh, Hirumazil, of course, is a Blood Bowl 2 veteran. Um, done well in Blitzpit. I believe he won the Team Blitzpit with uh, the Spanish fellas. And he's done alright in Chavis. I don't think he's won. But he certainly knows how to play the Blood Balls. I mean, everyone's in the top 16, so you'd imagine they know how to play Blood Ball. However, um, <laughs> the way the ladder works is um, the way that ladder works is, you know, about 70% of games end up in concedes. So, you know, Artemis has got a 50 and 0 dwarf team. That's actually a 15 and 0 dwarf team. <laughs> Which is kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Kind of ridiculous. So yeah, I don't really know. Don't really know what the uh, inducements were apart from, I mean, obviously Morgs there. Oh, it looks like there's a bribe as well. You can see the bribe up, up here. It's a bribe, yeah. You can see my mouse there. Good. So the the mouse is is Rumazil, but the the game game mouse, and I've got the uh, outside mouse. <laughs> yes, it's it's a bit strange, isn't it? The ladder it is. I mean, the thing is, if you're a thousand TV and you've got fourteen hundred, then at least you've got Morg, right? So then. Morg probably makes them concede. So it's just a weird... It's pretty weird, the way it is. And there's no uh, TV limit on matches. So pretty much anything can happen. Obviously the higher TV you are, the longer you spin for, because you're happy with any match, because you're quite happy to beat up a thousand TV. People at a thousand TV should have sp short spins to ensure they don't get matched down TV, but not everybody knows that that's what they should be doing. 
so he's not blocking with the thing. So maybe he's going to foul with a. Wait, well, no, but he could have power drived after the block, couldn't he? Is he just going to foul with a death roller? the side a little no he's just gonna assist the foul oh, he's, not, he's not fouling the other one interesting so crowding him out with guard foul before securing the ball muerto <laughs> he's, he's dead obviously <laughs> wow pretty good idea to foul there um, always foul if you're gonna kill somebody and didn't even have to use his bribe happy days Hello, Samich. Hello, Natario. Um, Blood Bowl 3, in my opinion, isn't playable. But, you know, some people are enjoying it. Allegedly. <laughs> people are definitely playing it and conceding. So he used the Apo on that death. And the Apo stopped it being a death. But, I mean, it, that was a pretty bad Apo, right? Because he should really save the Apo for Badly Hurts with this being a res format. I mean, that was a really good Black Oak, but... He's got eight really good players because otherwise, why is this one getting exposed, right? So, for some reason, he was protect—he was exposing that guy and protecting Mr. Throw, who is terrible. Um, but you see, we don't know how bad Mr. Throw is. You see, you can see Mr. Throw here, but um, he's got what is that block and shadowing probably? But you know, he, he could be like movement seven, strength five, edge four, right? We don't know. Well, edge two plus nowadays we just don't know what he is um, because there's no indication of stat ups but probably he's an absolutely shit mr. throw and for some reason a black hawk was exposed instead of him terrible oh is that fend I mean interesting decision to even field the thrower on defense really I would have rather just Played a Lino and exposed a Lino, then let a super black orc get fouled. Uh, well, it's not a black orc, is it a big one? Obviously, still end up calling them black orcs now. That's going to be very difficult for people to uh, adjust to, isn't it? Going for the the idiot block there. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously has to block with this guy. Because he's got a guard. So yeah, you could you could either put in the guard there or a player here. Nope, he's forgotten guard there. This is uh, pretty pretty bad pretty bad here from Hirumazil. He's he's doing the proper like I don't know how to play thing of check every block <laughs> rather than just work it out in your head. <laughs> oh wow, it doesn't stand firm. But that does, of course, take away his guard, which gives up this hit here. What's that? Wrestle. He's got shadowing, hasn't he? That's wrestle and shadowing. I'm pretty sure. Probably got the shadowing as a as a random, and that's a Kaz. Lovely rando Kaz. Well, he's got mighty blow, I guess. We're gonna three dice with Morg by the looks of this. Always a good idea. Well, not always. <laughs> I think Shadowing and Dauntless might be similar because one of them, the big guy's behind them, and one of them, the big guy's in front of them, or something. Oh, it's difficult. Where's he got sneaky get on that? <laughs> <laughs> who's got who's got sneaky get? I saw a sneaky get icon. What? But Morgan Thog is pretty great against orcs, isn't he? Um, 
like obviously mighty blood plus two is 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 not that good because he's often going to be having to use the plus two to break av rather than getting on the injury but just having a strength six guy that like they can't really deal with um and you know obviously with dwarves you normally strength three so like morg is a great great inducement for dwarves to take against orcs specifically I mean, Juggernaut and Stand Firm obviously look pretty similar, but people can differentiate those once they get used to it pretty easily. <laughs> I mean, they are different, and you can get used to them and tell them apart once you know, but... First impressions wise, they look uh, they look similar, don't they? I mean, you can see them there, right? There's a uh, stand firm there and juggernaut there. It's the pow. Guess we're not going to see a lot of creativity from the orcs just stand in front of the dwarves and hope it's enough. Hope something happens. Hope the dwarves get run into some problems, but with three removals already, um, there's unlikely to be any problems for the dwarves. He might be thinking about uh, using his bribe to keep the roller on for the second half now, seeing this has gone so well. Morg blitzing with Troll is pretty decent, right? Because it's uh, it's defenseless. Looking at 75% knockdown, but then three dicing with Morg is also quite desirable. So this this runner does not have any stat ups, so he is a bit of a crap runner there. Um, he's got block leader. That's definitely leader, isn't it? The uh, thing there, and phew, no idea what the other one is. Poor. Bit rowdy. <laughs> so he's hitting the block guy. I think this is a bit of a crap move. And that's why. <laughs> Had he hit the troll, he would have knocked it over. You really have to try and maximize your chance to knock down with Morg. Like, he's just so devastating, right? Plus two, you have to be making 3Ds with him or hitting defenseless players, in my opinion. Well, who knows? Maybe they just like maybe they couldn't use the old ones, right? Maybe there was like some kind of licensing issue or whatever that they just couldn't use them. I mean, you'd imagine a company would want to be cheap and lazy if at all possible, <laughs> right? So, I would imagine there was some issue with reusing the old icons. Not that the old icons were great or anything, they're just, uh... yes, there you go, cost efficient. Thanks, Samage. I shall be, uh, I shall be politically correct. <laughs> they're not money grabbing, extortionate scumbags. <laughs> cost efficient. You know, but it, it's right though, right? It's right. Like, you know, they were right to focus on the shop and that and, and the microtransactions. Somebody was saying they played somebody with a noble uh, Imperial Nobility team where literally everybody on the team had the flaming helmets. So, you know, that's like, uh, that was a lot of money, wasn't it? it was $75 or whatever that, uh, that that person played. And, and why not, right? You know, like when you think how many out thousands of hours Lots of us played on Blood Bowl too. It makes sense to try and uh, get pe get something out of people that are that obsessed, rather than just the same as people who either don't know how refunds work or played it for two hours in one minute. <laughs> like there's people that people are really mad about Blood Bowl, aren't they? So we use the app or there. Good idea. Mm. 
I mean, the thing is, though, the, the icons are a lot of the art style themselves, right? And, uh... These are shit. <laughs> Sorry, Gautier. I know you like your icons, but they're shit. They're technically shit. That's the technical term for them. They are... They are really, really, really bad icons. They're just bad. They're just badly done. And, you know, not badly drawn or anything, but like, but just bad. Like the this, the fact that it's all you see is like white and one color. It's hideous because they just all blend and merge, and it just makes it so hard. Like guards, you can pick out pretty easily, right? But like, pretty easily. But everything just merges into each other. It's, oh my god, it's so hideous. Yeah, this is the better blitz here. Push it back for an extra hits. But again, could have, uh, I mean, you might not want to positionally hit the uh, hit the troll that time, but I did prefer hitting the troll the other time. Now he has to try and protect Morg a little bit because, you know, with enough guard, Morg can get punched. And boy, how did you want to protect Morg? So he, he's got himself in a bit of bother here. Um, Herumazeo, Sexidordi Orcos, because he's got three on two over that side, and he's got a bunch over the other side. So he's like, he split his own team in half here. And now he's splitting them even more. Hmm. So I guess what what uh, Crezier wants to do next turn is uh, split this fella and try and insert team around this, but I mean he's down so many players it's going to be tough still. Oof, the Double Skulls. Instant reroll. Oh, I was thinking this was Sneaky Git, but it's it's Animosity, isn't it? Of course, that's Animosity. I was like, whoa, somebody's got Sneaky Git. Why isn't it showing up on their, uh, on their team thing? But it wasn't. DP plus two, sadly no joy. I do think probably blitzing this guy, but the problem is you're down so many players, right? He's got six versus three, four, five, six. So, although well, he's got quite a good trade over here, two, one, to three, out of the way, he can't really use that to get over here. And obviously two of these are massively, massively strong. So maybe he just has to try and like stay in the way a bit. As much as he can, it's, it's pretty tough though losing so many players. Maybe you should try and blitz Morg with the uh, troll. Seems quite reasonable. Well, he's not. Blitz is the stand firm fella. But yeah, I mean, this is still tricky for the dwarves here. Like, they, you know, they've, okay, they've got, they've got a lot of hits to come in. But it's a bit tricky to protect the ball. Especially with a rubbish ball carrier. Just waits. So now we're going to turn the corner and commit to a side on turn five. Hard commit. Gets the knockdown with Morg. And then 3D with the uh, with the roller as well. Just realised. 
Oh wow, no, no, I don't, I don't like this. I much prefer the roller going one, two, three, and then full square hitting him. Right, three dice. That was really nice. I don't, I don't know what his plan is now. Maybe he's gonna blitz the uh, troll. This is like, this is just a push. It's kind of in range to hit the ball. Uh, a bit for want of a better word crap oh he's fouling with the thrower so who's he blitzing with I think I'd stop fouling now use the bribe to keep him on for the second half Because the drivers won, right? Random camera move. Well done, game. <laughs> Clicking on players to try and do something. Amazing. There was just no blitz this turn? Oh, did Morg blitz? Did Morg... No, Morg was... Well, Morg was there at the start, wasn't he? Morg, Morg... I just think he didn't blitz here. Oh, man. Skull into stun. Well, that's great for the Orcs now. Now they can leave one onto two over there. And try and get... God, stop moving the camera, you loon. <laughs> Um, <laughs> wish I could move the camera <laughs> so they can leave one on two down there and get everyone back up here three but like you know two for next turn so that does make up for his losses a little bit in terms of numbers maybe you should double geified here I guess these kind of speculative geifies get a lot better now that you can re-roll both geifies right so you can just you can just click on move this guy here and then use both re-rolls Oh, big stun. I think he's got to jam in a bit. He's not, he's still keeping off. Yeah, he's jamming in. I guess he's the worst one. Yep, three skills versus five. No idea what they are. <laughs> mm, I think I would have hit from the top, not that it really matters. Because he can just move like the extra one afterwards anyway. Oh, he's got to stand firm, so on pushes it mattered. So yeah, so I was correct to do it from the square above. <laughs> correct. Correct, Jim. Really surprised he fouled on the turn five there. 
Like, the role is so good on defense. I don't know how many players he's got. But he hasn't taken much attrition. And he's got some bench. So I think fair enough, like, foul early, right? Because you've got DP plus two. So foul early and often, but then... Once you remove three players... And the drive's looking pretty secure. I think that's when you, uh... Change your strategy on... On the fouls. Beacons, this is a huge dodge. I mean, if that failed, the balls just hit, right? One, two, three, four, five, G, five. No, it's not. He was just out of range. Whew. He was just out of range. I mean, obviously, he calculated it. But yeah, he still needed that dodge because he could have still hit here and uh, come around the back somehow. One D gets the other guy over. Hmm. Not a lot that the horse can do. No chain there because it's stand firm. Might be an idea to try and like chain the uh, chain the troll into there or something. Not that it really does anything, but can't chain anybody anyway. That moves he doesn't have stand firm. Okay, so he didn't have stand firm. So <laughs> I thought I thought they had stand firm. Maybe he was showing a different card. So that was a rookie. So there might have been a chain there. Not that it, again. Not that it's really good. But might have wanted to have chained there somehow. He really doesn't want to tag Mork, does he? Because Mork will just smash him a bit. He could dodge with him. Oh, it's him standing in front. He's based the ball, GG. No coming back from that. Does use the reroll. And does tag Morg. Not what I would have done, but who can say if it's good or bad? <laughs> Doesn't kill him outrageously. I like that it's Findel Turnor. <laughs> That's a good thing, isn't it? He's just going to have to go in, I think, this turn. Leave the Orcs a two turn. Yes, that's what the thinking's about. I think it's way too dangerous to do anything else than just score.
So in the end, the splitting his team in half did cost him a bit. He ended up with two two for one trades. Oof. Uses the reroll, gets the push, because of course he's got dodge. That's what that yellow squiggly arrow is. <laughs> Is the touch. His opponent's using Fend. Fend is optional for no reason whatsoever. Uh, very annoying. Very annoying that Fend is always on manual. Should, of course, only be optional versus Frenzy players. There you go. So they get it done, but there's a two-turn chance for the Orcs. They do have goblins as well, so they might get a one-turner. We will argue the call on the roller send-off doesn't work. Wait, what? Morg's been sent off. Oh no, Morg does the thing. So, as it happened, he could have actually benched the roller still, right? So he could have benched the roller... If he hadn't fouled, he could have benched the roller for this and then um, had the roll of the second half. I really like trying to keep the roll of the second half. But, you know, plus two fouls could have ended up killing some more rocks. Who can say if it's good or bad? This is a bit of a nothing defense here, like it's not really stopping the one turn. I don't think it's a great defense against the two turn, but we shall see. It is too close for two. It is too close for throw teammate defense. But Sirazia has two turns, so it, this looks like he's trying to defend the one turn and the two turn at the same time, doesn't it? Which. And now I think he's abandoning defending the throw teammate. And he's just going to defend the two turn. Which is probably sensible. So he's keeping his... Blitzers, no, he's keeping one Blitzer and Morg free. Got to protect your Strength 6, dude. I mean, you really do, because you don't want him getting randomly banged out. Goblin has three skills, none of them are sneaky git. <laughs> so he's obviously been set up as a throw teammate specialist. No, got got to think about the throw teammate here. It's like two turn isn't easy with orcs, is it? So it may well be that the uh, the throw teammate is how he gets this done. It might have to be how he gets it done. That's maybe what I should have said. Which one is the strength plus? No idea. No idea who or how many strength pluses there are. Literally no idea. 
<laughs> or movement ups, or agility ups. Literally, this goblin could be movement 8, edge 4, well, edge 2 plus, no idea. Probably should be, shouldn't it? But I guess it isn't. Malmere on Fumble has a movement 8, agility 2 plus goblin, which is pretty good, surprisingly enough. Yeah, I mean, he's basically committed to the throw teammate here. He's got zero penetration. Absolutely zero penetration. Yikes, how terrible. Picks it up to the goblin and hands off. Is he just going for the touchdown now? I guess he's just going for it this turn. Fails the throw. But he's got another chance next turn, maybe. <laughs> because it's either that or absolute silence. Focus me, I'm famous. So there you go. Absolute silence is a bit fucking weird, isn't it? <laughs> Can't have the game sounds. I guess I could start a game and have the crowd sounds from Blood Bowl 3, couldn't I? I could do I can't. I can't have an S Club 7 playlist. Can I still do it? It's going on YouTube. I could have... I could open a game in Blood Bowl 3 and then have the sound of the game on. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be really annoying and repetitive, but hey... What can you do? At least it's more realistic to uh, to the thing. Is it too loud, the music? I mean, I can turn down the music a little bit. Just can't have absolute silence, can you? That's like weird. Really weird to have absolute silence. Touch loud. Okay. Turned it down a bit. It's just rough, isn't it? It's just rough the way what we've got to do with this. Casting the replays and stuff of someone's stream. Can't have their stream audio on. Limitations of the format. But you know, I do think it's, I think it's really cool that the uh, Yak and the admins, you know, have tried to make something happen. 
and succeeded. It's happening, isn't it? Given the community something, a reason to play, or attempt to finish games in a completely broken, bug-ridden mess of a game. <laughs> Completely irrelevant block here. I mean, it's not irrelevant because he's got mighty blow, so you might hurt him, but irrelevant to the uh, getting the job done and scoring the touchdown. Makes you wonder, though, doesn't it? There's probably more equity in trying to remove dwarves than there is in trying this one turn, to be honest. So, maybe he should have tried to engineer a 2D on Morg, seeing as, you know, removing Morg is game winning. Wow, he just does a 2 plus GFI there. That's uh, pretty terrible. It was also for no reason. <laughs> oh, Charles gone stupid. So no score for the Orcs. They get a chance for their KO to come back and another drive. Literally hitting the worst dwarf for no reason. Maybe to make him feel, make himself feel good about that completely pointless two plus GFI he made. <laughs> completely incorrect target there. He could have hit a mighty blow guard stand firm character, but hit a rookie instead. Not what I would have done, but who can say if it was right or wrong? It was wrong. <laughs> Man, this is a pretty ropey quality, isn't it? I can't make it better though, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, source. There you go, this is Hurumazeo. You can check him out on Twitch. And, uh, I'll link his, link his Twitch in the description. I mean, it, it's 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 it, it is what it is. <laughs> it wouldn't matter if it was in 4K. It's still a Blood Bowl three, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's hard for it to look good. <laughs> It's funny though because like it is it is obviously like a lot more crisp than Blood Bowl 2 isn't it and it you know going back to Blood Bowl 2 after Blood Bowl 3 it does it does look really dated and everything but man I just wish Blood Bowl 3 was better <laughs> cuz it's so hard to read and it's so dark and it's so Visually unappealing, despite being technically superior, if that makes sense. <laughs> really weird. I like. I really hate how dark it is. Like, why is every match played at night? <laughs> like, you know, it just looks like this is being played at night, doesn't it? With floodlights, it doesn't look like it. This, you know. If you've ever been outside, there might be some people that haven't been, or, or seen a sports game played outside. <laughs> you know, it's not as dark as this. This is ridiculously, ridiculously dark. It's not. This is not. You can watch any 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 Premier League match ever. It's not as dark as this. 
Okay, it's got darker with the rain. But during the day, never as dark as this. Like, this is... This is... Just ridiculous, honestly. Like, And if you turn the settings down, it gets lighter. So, Elliot's turned the settings down. I've turned the settings down. A few people have turned the settings down just to make it brighter because it's... Frustrating. So frustrating. I'm so sad about how bad Blood Bowl 3 is. I'm s literally so sad. More sad than the people who made it, I'm sure. <laughs> least at least Jack and his crew are trying to make the best out of a <laughs> terrible situation so you know fair play and I'm doing my part casting them or well, trying to cast them but it's hard when there's no sound <laughs> and they're all there's no cabal vision <laughs> and there won't be for months <laughs> and there's no there's no expensive mistakes there's no redrafting it, 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 it's funny the redrafting thing because there's no way to have in it like right? there's no way to have redrafting in ladders right in, in according to the rules you can make your own house rules to, to implement redraft which is what um which is what Fumble are doing. But there's no actual real way to apply redraft to a ladder. So that's, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Super interesting. I guess technically you could just have a redraft after every season and cut to 1300 rather than a, a, a flat restart. But that's, you know, that, that's the only thing you can do using the rules. Other than that, they'll have to make up the rules themselves. And at the end of the day, it's just, it's just pick your poison, right? You're either you're either facing giant teams or you're facing min max dwarves. Oh, Puglet! Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, the sounds in game are terrible. They're so much worse than Blood Bowl Two, right? Like, there's just there's the sound effects and like. And also, like, the tempo, did you say? Oh, you said tepid. Like, you, you know, like, how you have... Like, in Blood Bowl 2, you know, like, you have, like, the replays, right? When, when like, you know, you have the cutscenes, and, like, it's slow. And, it, like, it seems impactful, right? And there's sound effects and stuff. And then... And then this, it's just like, well, that happened, it's over now. You know, like, it's just, the cutscenes are just like, whoop, it happened, done. Okay, no one cares. Whereas, you know, in, in Blood Bowl 2, you're like, whoa, slow motion, boom, plaw, plaw, that something happened. It's pretty cool. Uh, technical superior, yeah, like higher res and like just better, better, like better done, right? It's, it's a lot more crisp, isn't it? Like, look at the backgrounds, right? The, uh, the way it's, it's like, it is technically superior, isn't it? Like, but, you know, because people say art is subjective, but it isn't. <laughs> it isn't totally subjective, is it? You know? Like, some things are just better than other things, you know? And, uh... So while you may prefer... You know... Something to something... Like, there's no doubt that this is better than... You know, it is better graphics than Blood Bowl 2, but it's just harder to watch and much harder to discern what's happening. I'll also... Yeah, you could redraft every month, you could I but then the problem is like what do you gain by it as well, right? That's the other thing for the redraft. Like, you know, some people have decided redraft is essential for reasons known only to themselves. And uh those people like some people have been very vocal about how you need redraft and and there's no real like there's 
you know, <laughs> you don't need redraft, right? And 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 cyanide don't know. It might be better with redraft. It might be worse with redraft. If anyone says it would definitely be better with redraft, then they're an idiot. <laughs> uh, yes, it should be in the game. Yes, of course, Boggley. Yes, of course it should be in the game, right, for people running leagues. However, at the moment, people can't run leagues at all because it simply does not work. That's why this is taking place with friendly matches. Competitions do not work in Blood Bowl 3, which is ridiculous, isn't it? Completely ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, it is kind of thing, isn't it? Everything's like high resin in focus and stuff, and it's just like everything's like vying for your attention, isn't it? You, you've like look at these circles, like you know, it's a silly thing, but these circles around the active team, they're all bright white. Like this is pure white. Like this should not be pure white. <laughs> it just shouldn't be. And so that's like really bright, isn't it? And then the whole game is dark, and then you've got this pure white, and then all of the all of the icons are like merging together because they're all just two ter two tone and stuff and it's just it's just all kinds of hideous absolutely flipping hideous Three D from Mog. Does not. But yeah, like if leagues were a thing, if leagues were possible in Blood Bowl Three, which obviously they should be, then you know it's it's lud like it's ludicrous to not have redraft for leagues. Yeah, of course it is, because. People want to play the real rules. And Cyanide had the absolute, the absolute goal to say that we've got a perfect implementation of the matches in-game and everything else. You know, they, they, they went from saying it's a 100% recreation of the Blood Bowl tabletop rules into, well, it's a 100% implementation of the tabletop rules during a match. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a totally different thing, anyway. And second of all, it isn't even close to that yet, is it? There's so many things missing from it even being, an, you know, implemented in the match. Yeah, and like that's really annoying. Really, really annoying. Yeah, interesting. I mean, this isn't so bad, right? He's, he's got he's got more kind of keeping them together. It's so the scent is a bit weak, but it is held by Stanfirm and Morg. So mostly just standing in front. It is a little bit tricky for the dwarves, right? Because they kind of do need multiple men to hit the big ones and stuff. Well now there now the fact that the dwarves have gone like a bit heavier on either side might encourage the orcs to split their team. Interesting. Yeah, that really grinded my gears honestly when when they went from when they went from it's going to be a hundred percent recreation of the rules to it's going to be a hundred percent recreation of the rules in match, which is the only thing that matters, and it's like. You know it isn't the only thing that matters. Like, what an idiotic thing to say, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's a big part of the appeal is the levelling up your guys and everything, isn't it? But, having said all of that, you know, I I think it's probably a good idea to not have redraft in the ladder, you know? Because I think redraft would annoy people in the ladder, right? 
I think the average person is not going to enjoy having to get rid of his players that he's leveled up. That's what I think anyway. I don't really know because I'm not an average person. <laughs> but that's what I think. Yes, being able to run a league at all would be nice, wouldn't it? I mean, redraft isn't part of the game in ladder, right? That's the thing, Badger. It sh it should be an option for leagues. It, so it should be it should be in Blood Bowl three for leagues. But there's there's no way in the rules to have it in a ladder format. <laughs> yeah, right, Pugly. Yeah. Yeah, it's so weird. Yeah, I heard that. The 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 what is that? If you fight the AI, there's 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 customizations. That are mutations. That's that's pretty outrageous. Paying for mutations. Pretty outrageous. Yeah, there you go, Focus Me On Famous. That, that's what I was thinking. Like, I get that I don't have all the answers because I'm not a normal person. Like, do you know what I mean? I've got, like, God knows how many thousand hours in Blood Bowl 2 and Fumble and Tabletop over the years. Like, do you know what I mean? So, And I think that's what a lot of people... A lot of people who, you know, maybe are VIPs and have been asked by Cyanide, I think a lot of people, like, lose perspective on that, right? And they just think of, you know, what, what they want or what would be best for them or whatever. Um, or, you know, what would be better for competitive players or, you know, all this kind of thing. So, like, obviously I'm pretty competitive as well. So, like, you, you've got to go what's best for the majority, haven't you, rather than what's best for, like, you know, the top 10% of players or whatever and things like that. So... Well, actually, I guess what you should do is you should go for what's best for people who are likely to pay for customizations. <laughs> when you get round down to the core of it and uh, what Cyanide should be doing, you, the only thing you need to care about are the customers who are paying for customizations. I don't like uh, leaving this runner here. I want to move him over to here. Okay, that's good enough. I think, I think here's better. I do think one one right is better, but I'll 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 let him off moving into there. Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. I mean, that's ridiculous, right? Like you'll you'll play people that have claw on all of their warriors, but only actually have claw on one of them and stuff. It's going to be stupid. It's going to be super annoying. And like you know, and then people are like, some people like don't understand the hatred for like not having the visual mutations and stuff and like well it doesn't really matter but like it matters because that's one of the things that people do on tabletop and it's one of the things that like would obviously be done in a video game like you don't need to think about it like of course you would have it in a video game wouldn't you like of course you would like you wouldn't play madden where everybody's everybody's six foot tall <laughs> and there's no difference between or, or even better what's it called um NBA 2K and, and whether someone you know Shaq is the same height as somebody you know some little I don't know a short player um, <laughs> some short player who's skilled from the NBA you wouldn't just have one model to represent everybody would you like of course you have like like that's one of the things so like mutations are part of that aren't they like it's crazy man it's crazy that you just would like that's absolutely one of the things that like you know, people do with the models, right? They do model mutations on. They do, like, customise them themselves. Like, it's one of the... Probably one of the most popular customizations that people manually do, right? You, you know, obviously there's people like Hammers and that that, like, do funky, you know, conversions for, like, their blitzers and whatever just randomly, right? But the most... I reckon... I mean, I reckon. I don't know this. I don't have any data to back up my assertions. But I reckon the, the modification that gets made the most 
is mutations. You know? That is simply not true. <laughs> the data does not support your assertion. Tiny Archibald, that's pretty good, yeah. Muggsy. Muggsy Balloon. Yeah, like, it, it just seems like an obvious thing, right? Like, it's it's a limitation of models, isn't it, right? You know, you buy, like, your Beastmen, you buy your Chaos Team, and you've got four Warriors and eight Beastmen, and then one of your Beastmen gets tentacles, and you're like, well, you can't see it, but he's got tentacles. <laughs> okay. But, like, if you've got a video game, then, of course, give them, like, I would like to see them get strength, you know? I would like to see the, the players that get strength be made a little bit bigger and stuff. Like, I think that'd be pretty cool, or, like, you know? But I understand that, okay, it'd be a bit of a ball ache and they don't want to do that. But in a perfect world, I would have strength up guys be a little bit bigger, you know? Stuff like that. Yeah, exactly, Pokemon. Like, things like that would be pretty cool, wouldn't they? Or like unlock customizations as they level and stuff, you know, like in the way that you did in Blood Bowl 1, as your guys leveled up, they got bigger hats and stuff, and bigger shoulder pads and all this kind of stuff, better armor. Have that a thing. Have that happen through leveling up rather than just. You just give. The, you know, you hand out the customizations randomly. Including mutations, like that's so dumb. Ugh. What was he going for the hit on the ball here? He could have double geified there. Oh no no no, this this guy's got guard. One, two, three, four. So this guy could double GFI in and get guard in. But he can't hit the ball. One, two, three, four, five, double GFI. Unless, obviously, this guy could have been move busted and this guy could have been plus move. So if he was one more move, he could have he could have double GFI'd in for guard and then double GFI'd at the ball, but he doesn't have the movement for it. Morg could have double GFI'd hit the ball. Three, four, five, six. Morg could have double GFI'd hit the ball. He might have already blitzed, honestly, this turn. <laughs> Hard to tell if somebody's blitzed or not, isn't it? Really hard to tell if somebody's actually blitzed or not while you're watching. I guess he's blitzing with Morg at the last action. Can look on the bottom for the two icon. Or is there a 1 if it hasn't been used, and a 0 if it has been? Okay, tanks. Tanks, Jay, leave. It's stuff you don't care about. Yeah, but like, do you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, people always come up with this when like anybody has like a valid criticism of Blood Bowl 3, and it's like... <laughs> you know, I know what you're saying. Because, you know, what we have is horrific. And, uh, you know, you just want a working game. <laughs> but that shouldn't be the baseline, you know? Like, wanting a game that doesn't hurt your eyes shouldn't be the baseline that, that you're asking for, right? It shouldn't be. Having a game that leagues are actually be able to be made, that shouldn't be something that you're asking for. You know, leagues work. <laughs> that shouldn't <laughs> that shouldn't be what you're asking for, exactly, right? So So like, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting for barely functioning is, yeah, it's pretty tragic, isn't it? Yeah, 
No, it, it, it pretty much causes like eye ache for me, like with all of these icons being the same and the extreme brightness and darkness at the same time, you know, like, like this is, this is bright white, like, it can't be just me that like, this is wrong, like, I know this is wrong, you know, like, I just know this is wrong. I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a creator of video games, but I know you shouldn't have a really dark game that's darker than any sports game ever played in daytime, ever, and then have bright white rings everywhere on the pitch. <laughs> so things have like, you know, things have definitely gone wrong. <laughs> And I, I do get, like, I do get, I do get eye strain, like, it's, it's just, it's just wrong. And, like, it's fair enough having all this detail here, I mean, this is fine, right, like, we probably spent some money on all of this, and, like, it's good for the trailers. But none of it matters, right, like, none of us care about all of this. We could all just play in the field from Blood Bowl 1, right, just a completely blank field. We'd say it was a bit crap and unfinished, right? We'd all we'd all complain a little bit about it bit looking crappy and unfinished and unpolished and everything. We we all would if it was just an empty grass field. But also it wouldn't matter. <laughs> but you know, like they should have this. They they should have all this. You know, it should it shouldn't be you know, something that you're arguing about, right? They should have all of this crap around the outside that no one cares about because it does add to the immersion if you like and it looks nice and everything and it's okay but that shouldn't be competing with having leagues be able to work <laughs> <laughs> yes and the dugouts yeah the dugouts being a long line is is ridiculous like that's just ridiculous it's ridiculous man The long line is, it's, it's frustrating because it's like a, an, it's because it's like the board game, isn't it? You know, like that's the thing, pretty much. It's a line of eighteen. I mean, it should be a line of more than eighteen, right? I don't know what the line should be. What should the line be? Is it like about 21 or something? I can't remember. But... I, the dugouts have always been a feature of Blood Bowl. You know, all the games right from second and onwards. D3 plus 3, I don't know what it is yet. It should be 16 plus uh, Riotous Rookies. I just don't know what Riotous Rookies is. I literally don't know what right this rookie says. Oh, cheeky pal. And a 23, there you go. So the door's touching the ball. They've done quite well, haven't they? Just st standing around midfield, not doing a whole lot. <laughs> There's been about six turns of nothing really happening. I think because he ended his turn in at the you know at the end of his turn. It's flashing for the whole two minutes now with this red this red thing, you know, that comes up when you've got the last few seconds. This is a bug that makes it look like he's in the last few seconds. Oh yeah, the dwarf coach who can join the game, yeah. Yeah, very good. There might be another one as well. Yeah, I think there's another one as well, yeah. 
Yeah, the Zon, yeah, the Zon cheerleader. Yeah, that makes, that, that rings a bell to me, Jay Lee. But then do they, would they have to go on the sideline or not? Like, seeing as they just come on, maybe they wouldn't have to go on the sideline. I guess you hire them, but then they could go, like, with the cheerleaders or whatever. Yes, the the orcs did spread out, and you know they kind of they kind of got pulled out to both flanks, didn't they? Whereas really they had to like they had to get penetration. They had to like bulldoze forward in one place. Mork held the center, so they probably should have like it's hard, right? Because it's hard to just like stick a lineman on Morg. Like you can try. You've more realistically got to try and stick two linemen on Morg. Because he'll, he'll stun one and then he'll stun the other. <laughs> and then try and get away from him as much as you can. A lot of knockdowns here for the dwarves, but a lot of remo a lot of orcs removed. Nine orcs left. And eleven dwarves still. He's getting a scoring threat. There is only two turns left after this and... Uh, Mr. Throw is not going to get it done because he's movement 5. Well, I think he's movement 5. He's base movement 5. This one could be movement 7, potentially. No way of telling at a glance. Could be movement 3, yeah. Could be mo double move busted. Imagine he wouldn't be have the ball if he was double move busted. That blitzer has been edge busted. If only Pogla. But as it is, it's just not possible. Moore can hit the ball here, can't he? Is it the most? Is it the uh, correct play? It's maybe more correct to. Uh Blitz with somebody else, but it's definitely the most fun to blitz with Morg, isn't it? Like, I think. I think you blitz with Morg just because it's the fun thing to do. Where well, he does. Gets the pout. It is a movement five. Yep, no no uh, no stat ups on the uh Dude. And he catches it with a guy who moved first. <laughs> I was th I I was thinking to myself. It's interesting because putting that guy at the back is like, you know, probably what you know, probably what you should do. Like that's the kind of safe move, right? To put that guy in the back in case more one in 72s but um you know it kind of sucks that you haven't got him to respond afterwards but then he just catches it anyway perfect It would be pretty good if uh, if Elon Musk or some some other ludicrous, uh, you know, ludicrously rich um, <laughs> person, who just was a mad obsessive of Blood Bowl and my stream specifically, and bought the rights to Blood Bowl and asked my advice. That would be brilliant, wouldn't it? I would love that. A 
Oh, Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill is probably not rich enough to to fricker away his money doing it. Because you're gonna lose money, right? Like, <laughs> it's re it's probably really hard to make Blood Bowl appeal to the masses. I think to make Blood Bowl appeal to the masses, it would be basically like have to be a reskinned backbreaker, something like that. I thought Backbreaker would have been really good, right? Because it's real physics, isn't it? Backbreaker. If anyone remembers Backbreaker, it was like a Madden, but with uh, with actual physics instead of canned animations. But obviously nobody got it because nobody cares about playing as, you know, the Philadelphia Seagulls and having Todd... Todd Morby, you know, and <laughs> as the quarterback, you know, like just... So it just no no NFL game can succeed as long as there's like they don't if they don't have the rights for the real players and teams right. Same with football and everything, isn't it? Yeah, you have to have the rights. So um. So yeah, but I thought that'd be really cool, right? Like if if like, you know, with a physics engine in Backbreaker, like having like. Big things like morgue and stuff, right? Hit harder and stuff. Goblins be sent flying, things like that. Could have been pretty cool, I always thought. I mean, it looks pretty much over for the old. I'm strong as fuck! I heard that as well, Jay Leave. Yeah, I heard. Hello, Steve. What I heard. Which, you know, it's all just, it's all just rumours, isn't it? So, you know, it could all be bollocks doesn't mean that it's true just because there's a rumor like somebody you know who knows how rumors get started or whatever right but there is a rumor that they had a contract for three games so they just got it done even though it was shit basically why didn't he follow with more because it's a blitz okay i'm just gonna pick it up with more Wait. Why didn't he follow then? Like, he's not moved afterwards. Why didn't he just follow? Oh. No, he's not doing anything. Oh. No, he's not doing anything there, is he? I guess he helps a bit there. Blitzers was the prone guy behind Morg. Thanks, Papa Piccio. So why didn't Morg follow then? Surely Morg should have followed. I guess it doesn't matter. It's turn 15. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, so Sinai got the rights for Blood Bowl because they made Death Ball or something, some some kind of rubbishy game years ago that was like copied off Blood Bowl. And uh, Chaos League, that's the one. Oh, I just got it, just got it in time before Skrull Dude said it. I remembered. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so, and then people are saying it was for three games. But, you know, who knows, right? People say a lot of shit. I put very little stock into, into the rumours that go around the Blood Bowl scene. But anyway, this is this is the game, isn't it? The Orcs can't score. It's it's over. Yeah, it's really bad. I played Chaos League. I must have bought it because I've definitely played it. Maybe it's got a refund. I've definitely played Chaos League before because I was like, I think one of my friends said like, it's like, it's like Blood Bowl. So I'm pretty sure I I probably got it. Um, then, yeah, I've definitely played Chaos League before. 
People just say a lot of shit, right? So, like, you know. The tabletop rumors, you know. Who knows, right? The only thing I put stock in is things that you know are true. Like, you know, the fact that the guy who wrote the rules, you know, his name is on the rules that he wrote them. And his NAF name is, you know, publicly available and he's played all of his games with dwarves, <laughs> you know. So it's it's an absolute fact that the guy who made the rules for uh, Blood Bowl 2020 is a big dwarf fan, right? Because it's the only, you know vast majority or all of his games played in NAF have been dwarves so that's something that's true but all the all the rumours could just be bollocks couldn't they so I don't like to uh, go on about them anyway in amongst all of that the game ended um, it was a bit of a damn squib towards the end wasn't it it was pretty much like it'd be over for a while the uh, the orcs got banged out um, didn't you know they, tr they spread themselves thin instead of trying to punch through and eventually got broken down 2-0 win for Sexador de Orcos, who is Hiruma Zio. So congrats to him. Commiserations to Sirizia. And thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.